Hello, Brian Knowlton back with another super cool slide reel tutorial. In this tutorial, we will identify the functions of all the components of a gas furnace. The first component here is a combustion air blower assembly. Its function is to create a negative pressure on the entire combustion area and to also blow all of the flue gases out of the furnace. Next, this is an air proving switch, also known as a sail switch. Its function is to detect when the combustion air blower motor is working properly. There is a hose on the back side which connects to the firebox and it senses when this is operating properly by a diaphragm inside. When there is a negative pressure, it closes the contacts here through that diaphragm. The closed contacts tell the module that everything is fine and it can start the uh, gas burning process. The gas valve, the function of this part is to regulate the gas flow to the burners. Um, it's normally closed. When it is energized, most of these are 24 volt, although you can find them in 110 volt and 220 volt. Um, when 24 volts is supplied to the gas valve, it allows gas to flow into the burner assembly. Next we have our bonnet, our gas bonnet. The purpose of it is to take the gas, um, mixes it with air, and the combustion process happens inside the firebox. Next, this part is normally attached. I have it unattached right now so we can see it. This is the hot surface igniter. What the hot surface igniter does is it glows red hot when it is supplied with 110 volts. You can also get these that are 24 volts or 220 volts. When it is supplied with 110 volts, it glows red hot. When the gas flows through, it ignites the, the gas. On this side, this is a flame sensor. The purpose of the flame sensor is the hot surface igniters on this side. The flame must cross each one of these all the way to the other side. Um, when it accomplishes this, the flame sensor is just a uh, two dissimilar metals. It's, what it does is the control module can sense when it is hot because it creates a, a very small electrical charge. Next down here, this is a door safety switch. This prevents 110 from feeding the unit when the, the front door is off. Our control module controls all the functions. It um, has 110 coming in and then it sends 110 out to the components that need 110. It also um, sends out all the control signals, it can, uh, the control signals being um, the gas valve, the combustion air blower motor, everything else that's on here. The other thing the control module does is it, it does all of our, our safety diagnostics. For instance, right here, this is a called a flame rollout switch. Um, if it gets too hot, because there's a problem, uh, the board will sense this because there will no longer be continuity through it and shut the unit down. One of the other safety devices we have is this here. This is known as a plenum thermostat. They're usually set somewhere around, uh, it just depends. This, one's, this one looks like it is 300 degrees. So if it ever uh, gets warmer than 300 degrees, this shuts off the unit as well. Next, on the very bottom, we have the blower motor assembly. The blower motor assembly, of course, is a multi-speed motor. For air conditioning, it runs on high, and for heating, it runs on low. And once again, our control module can, controls all of those speeds. There is also, um, right back here, is our transformer, which takes the 110 volts and lowers it to 24. This pretty much covers all of our components. Thanks for watching our video. Stay tuned while I introduce the super cool slide rule. It is the coolest tool in air conditioning. I'd like to take a minute to introduce you to the coolest tool in the HVAC industry. Historically, technicians have carried four or five different slide rules. You have one for R22, one for R410A, one for metal duct sizing, one for flexible duct sizing, and yet others for diagnostics or troubleshooting. Thankfully, those days are gone. This one tool will allow you to charge a system with R22 or R410A and either the superheat or subcooling method. The back cover contains required formulas 
It has capacitors, rules, and practices, a wet bulb conversion chart, how to perform computations on series or parallel circuits, an electric heat strip guide, a complete system troubleshooting diagnostic chart, and how to troubleshoot compressors in TXV. Inside is packed with even more information. It performs sizing of both metal and flexible duct. It has the only direct reading conversion from smooth metal to insulation line metal we've ever seen. The majority of technicians have never been taught that if the insulation is on the inside of the ductwork, you cannot size it with a regular duct calculator. It has step-by-step -step directions for determining airflow through a gas furnace, electric furnace, or an air conditioning unit. It has pressure drop multipliers for ductwork, as well as recommended velocities. And finally, the scanning of this QR code gives instant access to over 100 tutorials to assist the technician with every test and repair imaginable. You owe it to yourself as well as your customers to own this tool. It's less than $20 including shipping. The Supercool will save you countless hours of frustration when troubleshooting units. Log on to our website and get one today and I promise you will be a better technician tomorrow. And remember, every technician is only as good as their tools. Thanks for watching.